From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. This is Larry Comstock, Johnny, at Tri-Mutual Insurance. You're out at the Lamar home. Yeah, Larry. Police crime lab find out anything more about the stuff from here they took in for examination? Yes. Yes, they certainly did. Well? They found traces of that poison, pyrodameron, on the toothbrush that Thomas Lamar was using just before he on died. On the to- Are you kidding? Oh, no. No, indeed, John. Not a bit. There's a murder weapon for you, a toothbrush. Larry, send the cops out here. I think I've just about got this case sewed up. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location South Bend, Indiana. To the Universal Adjustment Bureau, Hartford, Connecticut... The following is my final entry of expenses incurred during investigation of the Lamar murder. And murder it most certainly was. It was in La Jolla, California, during my so-called vacation, that I met, and I must admit, kind of fell for Bonnie Lamar. It was from La Jolla that I flew her back to South Bend, Indiana, when we both received news of her foster father's sudden death. All the clues I'd been able to dig up seemed to point to one Walter Marson who had been Lamar's personal secretary and who lived at the Lamar mansion. At his room there in the house, I found the one book in the world that described the poison, pyridamarin, that had killed Thomas René Lamar. Poison derived from a pretty little yellow flower once raised on an island near Greece. A flower with sudden death in its pollen. Huh? You're Johnny Dollar, aren't you? Harrison the butler said you were up here. And you must be Walter Marston. What, uh... What are you doing in my room? Let me ask the questions, Marston. Now, just a minute. Look, mister, you may as well know it. I'm an insurance investigator. So Harrison said, but I don't believe it. Right here. My credentials. Uh-huh. Oh, I... I see, but I, I thought... You it... thought I was just a boyfriend that Vonnie Lamar met in La Jolla and who just came back here with her to comfort her over the loss of her father. Yes, yes, that's right. Well, you were wrong, mister. Or partly so. The main reason I'm here is to find out who murdered Thomas Lamar and Why? And I think I found out. You have? Well, well, who, Mr. Dollar? Interesting book you've been reading here. Flora Exotica Mediterranea. Stolen from the Central Library over in Chicago, wasn't it? Well, yes. Yes, it was. Found a poison in it, didn't you, Marston? Pyridamarin. Deadly, quick, and hard to trace. So rare that the chances were pretty good it wouldn't even be recognized. But it was. Where'd you get it, Walter? As you said... At the library. I'm talking about the poison, the pyridamarin that killed Thomas Lamar. Oh, no, no, no. You're, you're all wrong. Am I? Who besides Vonnie would benefit from the million and a half insurance on Lamar's life? Well, what made you think that... that I know that you I'd would, be the... because I know you're married to Vonnie. Oh, no. You tried I, to inveigle I... your way into Lamar's business, but he wouldn't have it. All your chiseling and conniving and phony stock transactions got you nowhere. So you did the next thing you could think of. You got something on Vonnie and forced her to marry you. So you thought you'd at least be sure of a big hunk of the insurance money over my dead oh, body. Oh, no, look, Dollar, maybe I was yeah, married to sure, Bonnie, but... I found out about her big gambling debts, got her off the hook by some fancy manipulation of her foster father's investments. No doubt threatened to tell him all about it unless she did marry you, and thereby guaranteed yourself a prosperous future. Oh, and you timed the whole thing beautifully when she was emotionally upset over the death of Mrs. Lamar. No, Dollar, you, you don't know but what you're talking about. Couldn't wait for him to die a natural death. <laughs> Dollar! Mr. Dollar. Sure, go ahead, speak up and make it good. Well, I, uh, I was married to Vani. But I'm not now. Sure. That's right. I did want a place in Lamar Metal Products, and I, I thought I could get it by showing Mr. Lamar how clever I was. <laughs> well, instead of throwing me out, he gave me another chance. I'll be forever grateful to him. It was a turning point in my life. I give you my word, Mr. Dollar, I've done nothing since that time that's been anything but completely honest and above board. Pretty speech. No, no, it, it's true. It's it's true, I swear it. Nevertheless, you married Vonnie in the hope We're that... We're divorced. You're... You're what? Well, it was the only honorable thing I could do. Would you like to see the final papers? Vonnie mailed them to me from Reno before she went to La Jolla. You mean she... 
Yeah, let me see him. Here. My desk. Don't try to pull a gun out of there, Marcel. You still don't believe me, do you? Yeah. There. Hmm. Then would you like to tell me who did murder Thomas Lamar? I wish to heaven I knew. That's why I got this book, hoping to find some clue as to where the pirate Dameron might have come from. But you sneaked this book out of the library. Because I was afraid of the very kind of suspicion that you've shown. Want to know something? I'm still showing. And I tell you, you're wrong. Ask Vani. She'll tell you. Oh, where is she? Harrison said you two had gone out together to make arrangements for the funeral. Yes, we did, and we came back together. But when Harrison told her that you were here to see her, she... Well, she she said she'd be back in a few minutes. Where did she go? Oh, she's still in the house somewhere, I, I think. Marson, just what is your relationship with Vani now? Well, there never was any love between us. Our marriage was only on paper. Yeah? As the foster daughter of the man to whom I owe so much, it's my duty to do what I can for her. In spite of her... Well, Remember what... Oh, even to the end, we, we kept from him any knowledge of her dissipations, her drinking and gambling. I thought that was all over. Oh, no, she's more deeply in debt now than she's ever been. I'm, I'm thankful Mr. Lamar died without knowing. Well, I'll be. But with the insurance, of course, you'll be able to pay off. Marson, you're a dirty rat, and your accusation isn't very well veiled. Are you trying to say that I'm accusing Vonnie of the... Murder. Oh, Mr. Dollar. Yeah, go on. This book. According to this, the plant from which Pirate Dameron is derived is now extinct. Unless somebody, somewhere, managed to salvage some seeds that were yes, then planted. Yes, exactly. Ruffra purpurus calendus, found only on a small Grecian island. I. I wonder if Dimitri would know about Dimitri? it. Dimitri? What's this sudden switch? Who's Dimitri? He's the old gardener. He's, he's here on the estate. Come on, Marson, and bring that book. Before going out to the gardener's cottage, I asked Harrison where Vani had gone, and he told us he only knew that she was somewhere in the grounds, that her car was still in the driveway. I phoned Larry Comstock again, but he'd left his office, presumably to come out here. And I called the man I'd talked to earlier at the library. Of course I can. As I told you before, I keep a very close check on the books in that section. Uh, let me see now. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Flora Exotica Mediterranea has only been out four or five times in the past several years. Once to a Mr. Thomas... Yeah? Uh, uh, Thomas Hanley. Oh. Uh, to a Mr. Ralph Cummings, Miss LaVon Lamar, and... Uh... That's enough. Thanks. I tried not to show Marson how I felt as we walked out to the cottage of Dimitri, the old gardener. Could be nothing too nice for Mr. Lamar. So I always try to keep things nice. Yeah, I can see. Uh, Dimitri, Mr. Dollar's here to, to investigate the circumstances of Mr. Lamar's death. Investi... Oh, yes. I hope you find who do this terrible thing to such a fine... Well, I want you to look at this book. Here. Did you ever see a flower like that? Oh, yes. Yes? Where? In old country. In Greece it used to be, but no more. You never saw it in this country? No, yes. Well, which is it? Uh, I should not say, because in all countries, against the law. I don't know why. Well, I do. Go on, Dimitri. But I keep many of my nice seeds anyway. And some of them were for this flower? Yes. Y you don't mind? It is very pretty flower. Did you ever plant any of them? Oh, no, no, not I. Somebody else? She was always so nice to me. Funny, Miss Lamar. <laughs> Look, sir. She even sent me gift on her trip last week. Dimitri. Look, look. You call it toilet case. See? It has soap and toothbrush and comb. Dollar. Dollar, look, look. That, that toothbrush. I am looking. The yellow stain on the bristles, the same color as the flower on this deadly plant. So, so pretty. She said her father, one of these two. Are... Oh, Dollar, I'm, I'm sick. You sick, poor so man? So crude, so corny, and so obvious it would never be noticed. And she was safely a couple of thousand miles away beyond any possible suspicion when the... Dimitri, yes. did she plant any of these seeds you gave her? She often planted many kinds. Where? Show us. 
In the morning, maybe. It's getting pretty dark now. Now, now, now. Come on. Come on, Marcel. Yeah. I knew you, you must not tell her, I show you. She always keep her little garden secret. She not even think I know. She very sweet girl. Yeah, very. But now... Hey, no. Oh. Oh, wait. Huh? She there now. Cultivating. Cultivating? With a shovel? Dimitri, go back to your cottage and stay there. Oh, you want... Come on, Marson. She's, she's digging. Digging. And I think I know why. She sees us. Go back. Go away, both of you. Stay here. I want to talk to you, Vani. What are you doing? What I'm doing is... I... I'm burying the little garden that was mine for Daddy. Little personal things, Johnny, that I grew with my own hands for him alone. And now that he's gone, this would be only one more bit of memory. Please, leave me, Johnny, to finish. Wait, Bonnie. What? Before you turn under that little yellow flower. Here, I'll show you. No, Johnny, don't touch it. Here. Source of a poison called pyridamron. How did you know? Yeah, look. Oh, oh, no, you don't. I'll kill you, too. I'll kill you. Oh, nobody, no. Oh, Walter. Walter, help me. Help you, help you. No, was... Johnny was in love with me, but I turned him down, and he, he came out here. Oh, no and... good, Bonnie. I hate you. I hate you both. Everything would have been all right if you hadn't come along. I hate you. I... Listen, Johnny. A million dollars. A million and a half. You and I could... No, Johnny, please don't! Please! Believe me, this is one case I wish I'd never seen. Oh, sure, you, the company, are all right. You won't have to pay off a million and a half in insurance. Your gain. But me, I've lost something. Faith. Faith in... I'm sick over the whole thing. Expense account, I'll add it up later. Right now, I'm going out and get roaring... Get some flowers. Some clean flowers. And just sit and look at them. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now, here's our star to tell you about next week's exciting story. Next week? Tell me, did you ever wake up from a pleasant dream to find a smoking gun in your hand and two bodies at your feet? Well, I have. Join us next week, and I'll tell you about it. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone, who also wrote this week's story. Heard in the cast were Virginia Gregg, Lawrence Dobkin, Harry Bartell, Eric Snowden, Howard McNair, John Daner, Gene Tatum, Joseph Kearns, Paul Richards, and Jack Moyles. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino. Be sure to join us on Monday night, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking. (laughs) 